very good evening friends meeting after a big gap with this metaramedic session also today we'll going to learn a close remedy to the drosera that is the spongia toaster both of them are very close but having a different action and a different aspects and that's what we have to discuss how we can think about the spongia and how we can think about the drosera that's what that's why i have selected the spongia to be learned immediately after the drosera before entering into the allen's keynotes i want to share two important cases in which i have utilized this remedy earlier because we have we know only the one aspect of the remedy we used to think about the spongia only in cases of uh, cup as a cup remedy mm, so a cup which is sponge like or all those things which we used to learn and we used to keep in our mind but in two occasions i have utilized this remedy and i am utilizing this remedy basically in in cases of a goiter a young lady before marriage just a uh, 24 years of age very weak emaciated hyperthyroid lady she came to me a girl and she was having a typical exothermus along with a big goiter over there and me so she was so weak emaciated and she had a history of cough earlier in childhood but never there after and she developed this since last two three years before treating with homeopathy and she was she has been asked that she has to remove the enlarged thy thyroid that is the only thing because it she was not responding to anything and then she came to for homeopathic treatment so considering all her features and a simple goiter this is a remedy spongia which has very specific action on thyroid gland it is a glandular affection is very characteristic with the spongia and a simple goiter generally comes under the sphere of this spongia the goiter was little bit hard not so hard like a bromium it was little but hard which was there and associated with a typical tubercular constitution a weak emaciated narrow chested lady typical tubercular constitution was there so i considered to give her spongia in fact goiter before that i have not treated goiter with um, any other remedy directly and this was the case directly come came for homeopathic treatment so i have started with the spongia 30 in her case uh, continuously for a, a 15 days and when i have started spongia i have done her all her reports and the reports were there showing the simple goiter associated with the higher levels of the thyroid hyperthyroid and tsh was very low and she was on neomercazole since last two three years and to which she was even not responding and she was quite hot lady so after spongia within 15 days she put on weight she her weight was just 32 33 kg at the age of 24 she put on 2 kg of weight after starting the spongia and that was a very good sign because in hyperthyroidism if weight starts increasing it indicates that see, you are on part of recovering the pulse which was very on a higher side it was nearly about 120 125 that was the range when i consulted it it came down to the 100 that was another second important thing which was good sign in her case and which reflected so i have continued spongia for longer time of duration in repeated doses and i was observing her after one month i stopped giving the spongia i just kept her on placebo and she was recovering and every time her weight was increasing and she reached to nearly about 40 kg of weight right from 32 to 40 it was a substantial gain in last it was not happened in two three years time which has happened immediately after starting the spongia and then gradually this swelling started reducing within a span of one year nearly the gland came to the normal and after an year she got married 
it was very difficult for her to go get married with 32 kg of weight and this goiter which was appearing with exothalamus and when everything vanished she got married at Ahmednagar over there and within a year she conceived and had a baby. Fantastic result with the help of Swandia. And that's why I could not forget that this case which I have treated, it was nearly about 10 years back, but it, it was a good case which thereafter I have utilized Swandia many times in the simple goiters and it helps. And that's why one, one must think of a Mm, spongia, whenever the things are associated, when the, whenever it is associated with palpitation, whenever it is associated with hyperthyroidism, uh, whenever it is associated with tubercular diathesis, one must think about the mm, spongia as a, one of the remedy. The bromium is another. Many people think about the bromium, but bromium, the stony hardness is there like the conium maculatum. That hardness is always there with the bromium. But both of them are very wonderful remedies for the goiters. So that was one case. And in another case, which was a case, in fact, which was maltreated um, orchitis case, which was treated with surgeon with a lot of antibiotics, nearly about 15 days antibiotics course was given. And patient palliated for nearly about 15 days, he was better. And immediately after stopping antibiotics and anti-inflammatory, that fellow again started getting the things. So he reverted back again to the homeopathy and he came with typical features of uh, orchitis over there, pain in testicles and uh, associated with a lot of palpitation over there. He was also a weak personality and there is associated dry curve. So these are, these are the things which are indicating a glandular affection associated with the dry curve, associated with the weakness or very weak, or less weight with a tubercular constitution. So I have considered again a spongia in that case. With spongia, that swelling has reduced within first 15 days completely. It was again a very good result which I have got with the uh, in case of orchitis with the help of swangia. See, these are the things which one has to understand that swangia is not the remedy specific for only for the cup, but a remedy which is having a tubercular diathesis with a heart action, action on heart with angina pectoris. A very important feature, again, a very good remedy for angina pectoris, which we never think that it has very specific action on an heart. So these are the things one should not forget while reading the spongia toaster. So we'll go towards the Allen's keynotes and we'll start with the what Allen wants to explain about this. Roasted sponge, spongia. And first sentence, it has been given in italic for the tubercular diathesis. And this tendency towards the tuberculosis or tubercular constitution is very characteristic with spongia. Both remedies, Drosera is also tubercular diathesis, spongia is also tubercular diathesis. But the expressions varies. In case of Drosera, we have learned that it is a cuff remedy, but associated with pot spine, that cases which we have discussed on that day, the tubercular spine. Here, the actions, in more, actions are more on the glandular system in the spongia. Then he says, adapted, especially adapted diseases of children and women. See, the very specific action. That's why these, these sentences one should not forget. This is a remedy which is very common with the women, with, very common with the children. Every remedy has its sphere of action. Barataka, extremes of ages. That is, that is the specific action which one should not forget. These things gives you a direction to think about the remedy. So, specially adapted to disease of children and women, where the light hair, black fiber, and fair complexion. And these are quite fair complexion, is very characteristic with this remedy. Both the cases with, who, to, with whom I have treated that fair complexion was very characteristic. That case of goiter as well as case of arthritis. Bromium is having similar constitution. If you open the bromium in first sentence, there also he has mentioned it is blue eyes, light, light hair complexion. That very typical light complexion that is with the bromium also. Swelling and induration of glands, goiter, again a bromium. So see, swelling and induration of glands, 
So glandular affections, the scrofulous diathesis is very characteristic with this remedy that is Pongia tosta. And goiter is very specifically mentioned. Underline that under with the goiter. And in bracket, my suggestion is simple goiter is very clearly covered with this remedy. Bromium, if you open the bromium, you'll find that typical stony hardness. Open the bromium in your book. It is definitely a stony hardness. Uh, yes, the fourth, fifth, fifth paragraph, stony heart, scrupulous, tuberculous swelling of the gland, especially on the lower jaw and throat, thyroid, submaxillary, parotid, testy. That is the stony hardness, which is of conium, phytolacca. These are the remedies where the stony hardness, or calcarea fluid, stony hardness is there. That, that goes in favor of bromium and all those remedies. Awakens in the fright. Awakens in a fright and feels as if suffocating, as if he had to breathe through the sponge. And this is very specific with the um, uh, spongy operation. They, they sleep well and they, all of a sudden they wake up frightened and they are breathing very hard and they, they feel that, it, that as if they are um, uh, res taking respiration through a sponge and that feeling heaviness in the chest which is very characteristic of the spongy toaster. Every mental excitement aggravates or increases the curve. And that is again one important feature. Least mental exertion causes a curve, then it brings it out. That is spongy, again very important feature. Least mental exertion causes a palpitation, calcarea ars. So you have to understand what is the cause and what is the effect. Induration means hardness. Induration is heart swelling. Glandular affections is scrupulous diathesis. Induration means hard glandular affections. Every mental excitement ag aggravates or increases the curve. Worse after sleep and slips into aggravation like lachesis. Yes, it's very close to lachesis. In case of swanya, it is palpitation. All of a sudden, patient wakes up from the sleep with the palpitation. Sometimes it is cough with which patient wakes up. In lachesis, it is a general modality. In case of spongia, it is local modality. Sore throat aggravated after eating sweet things. Underline, we, we generally never find very easily these things, but sore throat aggravated by sweet things, along with argentum nitricum, this is one remedy one should not forget. Thyroid glands swollen, even with chin, with suffocative paroxysms at night. So, patient is having swelling over there and patient wakes up at night with a suffocation. Breathing is difficult and there is a goiter which you can very easily locate in the patient. So, goiter, you, you find it out. This comes again and again in case of swanji and this is very specific, important remedy for the goiter. Great dryness of mucous membranes of air passages, the throat, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, dry as a horn. So it is so dry. Karkash, that is very difficult. Very dryness of the whole air passages, which happens to be there like a bryon. Here the dryness is very close to the bryon. Cup, see the cup. Cup is dry, barking. Again, a dryness how producing barking like aconite, like heparsal. There is also barking. Crowpy means pharyngeal affections which appears over there. Rasping and ringing, wheezing, whistling. Everything is perfectly dry. No mucus run. See, this is too important to understand. You, you get a cup where the absolutely no thought of a mucus run. No, no collection of um, secretions over here. Hepar goes after spongia. If the Curve starts settling, and we, if you would have given the spongy, a patient is improving, but at the same time, the curve is starting settling over there, then you can think of the aversor after the spongy. So, crop is nothing but the pharyngeal secretion, the curve which is developed because of pharyngeal irritation is the crop. Cuff, dry, sibilant, sibilant is a hissing sound. Cup is dry, sibilant, like a saw driven through the pine board. A carpenter who is doing a work on the 
pine board and he is cutting that and that sound which is very difficult to hear to your ears. That type of curve which you can get in uh, spongia. That it, it, it is very difficult to hear. It creates irritation inside your ears. So dry barking curve, uh, curve dry sibilant like a raw saw driven through a pine board, aggravated by sweets, aggravated by cold drinks, smoking, lying with air low, dry cold wind. See the modalities. Modalities are very important. When your patient lies down in the bed and head low position and cup gets irritated, that is very typical position of spongia. Aggravated by reading, aggravated by singing, aggravated by talking, aggravated by soloing. All things aggravate the curve of the spongia. Ameliorated by eating and ameliorated by drinking warm things. Only two amelioration modalities. But maximum aggravating modalities which you can see about the curve of the spongia. And that's why spongia is a very important remedy in open curve, dry types of curve where there is no mucus rals are present. Crowd, anxious, wheezing, aggravated during inspiration. Very, very typical modality. Difficulty to take a, a rest, rest, mm, air inside. Difficulty in expiration is economic. Difficulty in expiration, the breathlessness, mephitis, another remedy. Specifically, if, it is, if they are infants, that is mephitis is very important. Yes, here it is given. Aggravated during expiration is economic. Aggravation before midnight, spongy. Aggravation after midnight in the morning phase is the FISR period. See, modalities specifies your remedy. They give you exactly this and that's why take a detailed history. Whenever patient is cupping, ask details where exactly, when exactly the patient is having cup. In what time, at what, at what time, in which time of the day. See the heart symptoms. Palpitation. And this is related with two things. Hyperthyroidism, Palpitation is there. It is because of anxiety emotions. It is there. And it is associated with chest pain. Palpitation, violent with pain and gasping respiration. Patient struggles for the breath. That is very difficult. Palpitation, awakened suddenly after midnight with suffocation. Patient all of a sudden wakes up having palpitation, wild suffocation with a lot of cough and he is is frightened at that time with great anxiety. Palpitation, volvular insufficiency, a very important remedy for volvular heart disease associated with palpitation, associated with curve, associated with suffocation. Palpitation before or during menses, another modality, characteristic modality. See, here whole state is defined in that paragraph regarding the heart complaint. Palpitation when it happens, which are things which are associated with that. If you are able to catch that whole paragraph, then you get the state of the spongia patient with the heart affection. One more paragraph is again related with the heart complaints and here he defines it is a very good remedy for angina pectoris. See the angina pectoris, contracting pain, heat, faintness, suffocation, anxiety and sweat. See the Characteristic features, there is contracting pain associated with heat, associated with faintness, associated with suffocation, associated with anxiety, associated with lot of sweat. Typical presentation of angina pectoris which you can get. Because what happens, we fix the remedies in our mind. When we think about angina pectoris, the first remedy comes in our mind is cactus. Then if we read Matra Medica more, then the spider comes in our mind. We have to think about remedies. What are the associated features along with the angina pectoris? Then, then we can understand. So every remedy has its own presentation. Lactrodactus mactans, having the typical chest pain and radiates towards the left upper extremity with suffocation, another important remedy, spider remedy. So, angina pectoris, contracting pain, heat and fitness, suffocation, anxiety and sweat, aggravated after midnight. So, patient wakes up because during after during the sleep, at after the midnight and having all those features. 
So these are two hard, important affections which one should not forget in spongia. See the action, respiratory symptoms, yes, definitely. Glandular affections, very important. Thyroid gland, very important. Heart, very important. And last, he explains, the spermatic cord, the testicles. Spermatic cord is swollen, painful. Testicles swollen, bruised. Squeezed, very important word. Patient comes, it is as if squeezed. Very difficult. After suppressed gonorrhea, after suppressed gonorrhea, severe burning in urination, after suppressed gonorrhea, cannabis sativa, here it is very difficult swelling of the testicles. After suppressed gonorrhea or maltreated architis. Maltreated orchitis, very important word. Treatment is given for test testicular swelling and antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, and patient still recover, never recovers completely and gets again and again the same symptom. This remedy is a wonderful remedy in treating the maltreated orchitis. See, very nicely the Alan has explained about all the specific actions and important actions of the now he turns toward the relation and relationship one must understand. The spongia follows well after aconite and hepa in cup and crowd when dryness fevers. If there is severe dryness, if it is acute state, if you would have given the aconite and it is not still working and if all the modalities matches and associated with typical suffocating feeling, think of spongia after aconite. Same is true with the hepar. After hepar, you can think spongia. But if after spongia, if what he says next is very important. After spongia, hepar, when the mucus commences to rattle. So you would have given the spongia and patient feels better in cup, but he started getting the saturation of the mucus over there in the throat and chest. Think of the hepar sir. Both remedies complement each other in such types of cases. And that's what one has to understand. And then lastly, compare the arnica, the costicum, the iodum, lachesis, nux moschata, sputa loosened but must be swallowed again. There is loosened sputa must be swallowed, never comes out. That is very important feature with this. You, you must compare all those remedies. That's what the analysis is. So, every remedy has its own aspect. Spongy has its own aspect. A very typical granular remedy having a scrupulous diathesis associated with tubercular diathesis, associated with the uh, action, having specific action on thyroid gland, having specific action on the all the glandular systems, specifically the testicles also having action on the heart, producing a palpitation with angina pectoris. And a typical cup having a very specific dryness, marked dryness, without any mucus rales. Also aggravated during inspiration. One must think about this remedy. So spongia, we have finished. We have learned about the spongia. And we have to understand these remedies in depth. So one should not forget spongia. We have learned drosera also. We have learned spongia also. Tomorrow, we'll start with uh, one more remedy from second year syllabus. First, uh, I think it, we'll find it out just a short remedy in tomorrow's session. We'll finish that and then we'll go ahead with again polyphrase. So that's all for today. If any query is there, we'll have a chat. Otherwise, we'll continue. Scrofulous diathesis means affections of the glands. Tubercular is one part. Tubular, tubercular is glandular affection for having a tuberculosis. Glandular affection is scrofulosis. It might be simple infective or it might be anything. Tubercular is cause of it. Acute. Sure. Maybe. Thing. 
Tubercular spine, you have to go for x rays first, followed by MRI. To diagnose the tubercular spine, first is simple x ray, where x ray never gives you exactly the cold abscess. So, as abscess, many times you require to go for the MRI. MRI is very specifically details that if there is a psoas abscess or cold abscess, which is saturated over there. Bamboo spine is the ankylosing small dimensions. So that's all for today. Tomorrow we'll meet with some other remedy. Thanks. Thanks of, for attending so much.